Today we're checking out DBX286S mic preamp and processor. Let's get into it. Welcome back folks, my name's Shane. So today we're checking out this microphone preamp. Odds are, if you clicked on this video, you've already started to do some research about this unit, much like I did. I scoured the web trying to find videos and information on this particular unit, and I was convinced this was the right thing for the job. I actually paid for this item, this wasn't free or anything like that, so we're gonna hook it up. I'm gonna give you my first honest opinions on it. If I don't like it, I may take it back, but I think from everything that I've heard and seen online about this, it's gonna definitely do the business. So we're gonna open this up, see what's in the box. I'm gonna show you how to hook it up. And then we're also gonna see how it sounds and also test it against just a regular input on my UR22MK2 sound card. So let's open it up and see what we've got in the box. All right, in the box, there's hardly anything at all. We get a kettle plug power cable. We also get some screws in case we wanna rack mount the unit. We get some instructions and a warranty card. And then we get the unit itself. Ooh, here we go. Now my first impressions of this is it feels great in the hand already. It actually has quite a bit of weight behind it. I was gonna be, I was a little concerned maybe that it might feel kind of cheap and nasty, but it doesn't at all. And it's not a cheap unit either. Here in Australia, they retail for over 300 bucks. So I'm sure it will be different on the secondhand market and also in other areas around the world. But first impressions is this is built like a tank and it's quite substantial in the hand. Here's the front panel and the main reason I wanted this was for doing podcasts and just tidying up the audio. So when it goes into the computer or I get a file off my recorder, it's gonna sound like it's already had some enhancements made to it. That was the idea for me buying this. Now looking at the back, there's one kind of thing missing that I'm a little bit shocked of. There's no XLR out. We do obviously get the output over here. It's a regular sort of jack one, but it's interesting they didn't provide the opposite of this going out. Kind of strange, but anyway, that's that. Now, if you're wondering what type of connector you need to get this to your audio interface, I'll leave some links in the description below, but it's essentially a cable like this. We need a male XLR on one side, and we need what they call the stereo TRS jack on the other side. Notice that there's two actual sections, or three if you count the tip, but there's two rings. That's the exact cable that you need. Links will be below. So in terms of the overall setup, it's nice and simple. We plug the power in over here. I've actually got an extension cable ready to go. So let's plug that in. And then we're gonna be using the output from the jack side and that's gonna go into the sound card. All right, just for a basis for comparison, what you're hearing now is this Rode Procaster going direct into my UR22 MK2 sound card with the gain cranked. And you might be thinking, why is the volume so low? That's because this is a really low output microphone. You need something like this to get the most out of it. I'm gonna show you how it works just as a preamp and then we'll click in the effects on the 286S. So here we go. All right, check out how cool this sounds. I've got my microphone plugged into the DBX286S, no post-processing, going straight into my sound card back there. And what you're listening to, if I stop talking, is nothing. The noise gate is awesome. It's nice and responsive and it doesn't feel intrusive. It doesn't feel like it's gonna cut anything out even if I sit back a little bit and talk, which is pretty cool too. So you can get right up on this microphone now and it's gonna sound like a million bucks. Or if you want, you can turn the gain up a little more and sit back a little bit further and also use it like this. So if I was to talk this way now, which is something that I did on my podcast recently, I would lose the audio normally. So now it's back or it's more consistent. The compressor's doing the job. As you can see from these lights on the front, I'm kind of running the drive up a little bit and that's for a reason. I like the fact that if now, if I turn around and talk, it's still gonna pick up my voice. It might not be perfect, but it's as it's so much better. And it's gonna be more reliable about getting a good strong signal now into the computer, irrespective of where I or someone else on the podcast actually turns and talks. The audio should hopefully be very, very consistent now. I love this gate. It just works. It feels really, really great. I also love this little enhancer over here as well. So I've got the, the actual bass, which is this control on the left up to about four. I'll just play with that quickly. I'll turn it back down. So that's how it would sound normally and up to about three or four again. As you can hear, there's more low end coming into the signal now. If you want that big radio voice, you can talk soft and you can get it <laughs> by turning the enhancer. Or the, what do they call it on this? The detail. The LF detail, the low frequency detail up to about seven. So there you go. You can get that if you so choose. It's probably a little bit overkill. So 
I like it down at about three or four and somewhere around the same for the, the top end can get kind of bright and nasty quickly. So um, you keep that down as well. You won't need a, a lot of it. And depending on what kind of microphone you have, this would be a really great addition to your lineup. If you've got an inexpensive microphone or even something like a 57, if you're using a microphone like that, this will enhance the sound of that. Coming up on the channel as well, I'm going to be testing this with a whole lot of different microphones. I've probably got 20 mics in my collection, condenser mics, dynamic microphones, podcasting microphones. So if that's of interest to you, come back for more. I'll definitely be posting a follow-up video on how microphones interact and sound with this particular unit. I thought I'd show you how it sounds now with the de currently off. You've been listening to it with it on. So this will allow all the sibilance or those S words to be more prominent in the actual sound as they would be heard in the room. But if you want to actually sort of adjust that, you just turn the threshold up just a little bit and then you find the sweet spot on your voice. For me, it was about somewhere just before 8K. Seemed to sort of get rid of that without uh, affecting the sound of my speech, which is you've got to be careful of. Because if you turn the threshold up too much, it sounds like you have a speech impediment, which maybe I do anyway, but it actually reduces it way too much. So as you can see, just have it down. Just have it down so it's actually just doing a little bit and it will make it more pleasing if someone's listening to a, a really long podcast or something like that. You, it won't be as annoying to hear uh, all those sort of S words come through and it gets irritating after a while. They do that on a lot of albums as well. Most vocal tracks always have a de -esser. So you might be asking, how many microphones can you actually plug into this particular unit? Only one. So just keep that in mind. If you're looking for a dual channel setup, I actually have the Behringer Ultra Gain Pro back here, which is a dual tube. I put that in quotations preamp so it's a, a dual microphone preamp i love that it's drastically changed the audio on my youtube channel and podcast already but it doesn't have a lot of the gating features and also the compressor and all of that so i ended up with one of these as well i bought this because we do a three-person podcast and this will essentially daisy chain on the back of that mic preamp back there and give me all the functionality of the dbx so i'll be really looking forward to seeing whether or not this is as good as that so we'll do a comparison coming up on the channel also Overall, what are my thoughts about this and am I happy with it? So there's a few things in this video I wanted to cover. I didn't really want to cover the specs. There's plenty of videos out there about how it all works and all that kind of stuff. But I want to show you my first impressions, how easy it was to set up and the audio quality with a podcasting microphone. And I think it sounds really, really nice. Please let me know in the comments what you think. Overall, I'm wrapped with my decision looking at the waveforms. Like I've said a few times, I really think that the the audio looks nice and consistent and strong, and I'll hear that back in post just to make sure that everything's sweet. And if I do any adjustments, I'll leave them on screen, but I don't think I will. I think the only thing I'll adjust will be the level of the audio if I need to. But overall, I think this sounds great. Please let me know in the comments what you think. And uh, yeah, if you want to see more videos like this, subscribe, click the bell. And like I said, coming up, we have basically the clone of this in a unit without the actual mic preamp. So that'll be coming up on the channel as well. So stay tuned for that. Thanks again for watching. My name's Shane. I'll catch you on the next video. See ya.